So uh, let us start the class, the very first class of this uh, subject, the mechanics of material, or you can say strength of materials. Uh, this is a very introduction class, and we are going to see some basic relationship and the difference between the mechanics, engineering mechanics you have studied in earlier semester, uh, and the mechanics, a kind of mechanics that we are going to study in this semester. Okay. Uh, First of all, the difference between the uh, mechanics of a rigid body and a deformable body that we have to understand. So you can look at this image. So there are uh, uh, there are uh, two similar images, but with a small difference. Okay. So now you see uh, the balls are hanging in the ends of uh, this plate. Okay. And there is a pivot, a support at the center of uh, this plate. Okay, which is supporting this plate, and you are hanging two balls at the ends. Okay, but what is the difference? This particular plate is bent, and this particular plate is so straight. Then there is no uh, the deformation in this plate. Okay, uh, but you see, you are attaching a same kind of a ball. Okay, at both the ends of the same kind of plate. But we are concerning about the deformation in this figure, whereas in this figure, the body is not uh, shown with a deformation. Okay, it is shown as a straight plate. So that is a basic difference. So uh, here our concern is changing. That's the point that you have to understand. Okay, so when you hang a ball, ball of uh, uh, load, say W here and W here, Okay, then there will be a reaction over here. Okay, there will be a reaction. Same, imagine the, the ball is uh, weighing W here as well. Okay, and now there will be a reaction at the point of support always. That's what you have studied in your uh, mechanics of rigid body. So, there will be force action, okay, that is W here. And for every force, there will be reaction at the support okay there will be reaction at the support okay so you will be only dealing with forces and their reactions in the body in which it is acting okay so in, uh, this is what you have concerned in your uh, mechanics of rigid body okay then you can simply say this body is assumed to be a rigid one this will not deflect this will not deflect under any loading condition. This is what the, uh, the assumption you had. But in actual case, what happens? In actual case, that flat plate also deforms maybe to a very small magnitude. Uh, this I have, you may, you may also think that uh, this particular uh, uh, deformation is exaggerated say this dotted line is the initial position of the plate and this is the deformation so this deformation you, you it may be also in microns okay micron means 10 to the power minus 6 meters which is very very small to uh, uh, even see you cannot see that that kind of uh, smallest deformation using your barriers but this particular plate may still be under deflection but it is not visible to your eye but if you imagine that say it is magnified and shown here and there is a deflection okay uh, so that's the thing so we are now concerning about even the smallest deformation that is happening in the plate okay so every body which is under some force if it is constrained what is constrained constrained means what it is restricted to move anywhere in the sense then it will definitely under it will be under deformation okay every body will be under deformation so uh, this is what the basic difference between the rigid body and deformation but but there is no rigid body you can say the body is so stiffer for the applied force uh, stiffer means uh, say you have a you have a steel plate attached over here as you say this particular plate is a steel plate and you have a 
uh, a small uh, rubber ball which is uh, which is uh, hanging in the ends of the plate so so imagine steel will be very stiff steel will be very stiff but the balls the rubber ball the cricket ball say the cricket ball is not Uh, wait. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes or not? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. So when you okay, so when you hang a small cricket ball, the steel plate. What will not happen? The steel plate will not, not deform. Okay. At the same time, you you remove that cricket ball and you put a heavy. Um, uh, a heavy steel ball again, a big steel ball in the ends. Then what will happen? The steel ball, uh, as it is weighing heavily, what will happen? It will be under deformation like this. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. When you attach a smallest magnitude of weight, your your body may be very stiff, so it may not uh, uh, deform. Okay, and that condition you can assume the body as a rigid body. But whereas when you increase the load, the body will also be under, when it is constrained, it will also be under some deformation, okay? So that is what we call deformation of the solid body, okay? So in some condition, the body can be assumed as, this plate can be assumed as a rigid body and in certain conditions, you should assume, you should not assume the body as a rigid body. Uh, the the ball is the example that uh, what I have told you. If you if you assume a cricket ball, then uh, if the steel plate may, may be considered as a rigid body because the deformation will be very very negligible. Even it may not happen. But when you replace the body with a heavy ball, okay, definitely there will be a deformation of the plate, and that should be considered. Okay, so that is what the in that condition you should not assume this plate as a rigid plate, a rigid body. It is a deformable body. Okay. So simply, if we say in mechanics, you have only considered the forces and reactions, but in mechanics of materials, uh, uh, whereas think of materials in this subject, we are going to concern about the deformation of the body when it is under some magnitude of load. Okay, so this is the basic difference. I hope all of you understand. Is there any question, guys? Is there any question? Please feel free to ask any questions. Is it clear? Yes or no? Give me an answer. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. Oh, why don't you give an answer, man? Nobody is giving an answer. See, see, are you all listening or not? I don't know. This is the biggest problem. <laughs> so if you ask any question, if you have any doubt, then ask. Otherwise, you just at least say there is no doubt. Okay, fine. So this is the basic difference between uh, rigid body and deformable body. And here, uh, the next thing that you have to uh, understand, what is the difference between the external forces and the internal forces? Okay, so external forces are nothing but the force you are applying on the body. So here you are hanging some weight of uh, uh, W kgs, okay, kgs. Uh, this is nothing but the external force. This is an external force, okay. That because this is the load that is applied on the body, okay. The, uh, the force that is applied on the body, the external, you can simply say the external force is nothing but the force is acting, the force is acting on the body, okay, solid body, okay, and not only the applied force, the, the induced reactions in the support, they are also external, these reactions. Like, so external forces means the applied forces, all the applied forces and reactions, all of them, because reaction is also acting on the pivot, okay. Due to the pivot, you are, you are exerting a reaction force on the body. So if you draw the free body diagram for this case, then what will be the free body diagram? So you will be having 
in your free body diagram you have to uh, show the forces as well as reaction acting on the body so for this body only i'm going to draw the free body diagram in the sense w these are the two forces acting on the body and what is the reaction that is all that is acting on the body okay so the forces and reactions has to be represented in the free body diagram you know that and that's what i have represented so all these forces are external forces including the applied force as well as the reaction all are external forces okay then what do you mean by internal force internal force is nothing but whenever you apply a force on the constrained body okay then the body will try to deform as i told you earlier okay this aspect you have not considered in your engineering mechanics whereas you are considering here okay imagine here you have a you have a bar like this this a bar a small cantilever bar and now you are applying a force p at the end okay then what will happen there will be a reaction because here it is a support right then there will be a reaction equal and opposite reaction that is minus p in the opposite direction so this is what the only thing you have concerned in your engineering mechanics okay so now what will happen in addition this body will try to elongate because it is getting pulled it is getting pulled here it is constrained and you are pulling this rod in this direction so what happens it is trying to stretch out okay it is trying to stretch out okay so now i am just drawing a, a kind of uh, a, an atomic way imagine these are the atoms okay these are the atoms in the body okay these are the atoms and you are pulling this body okay with the force p okay what happens the bond between the atoms will try to stretch they will try to stretch okay but it is not actually coming out it is not getting fractured okay these two atoms they will be having a field between them which are uh, bonded using the electrons okay covalent bond okay so this is one atom and this is one atom and when you apply the force what happens the distance between the atoms are increasing but they are within the zone of bonding okay so this is what we call the stretch okay so when this stretch is happening what is happening it is not coming out okay but it is getting elongated then there is something offering the resistance to this stretch okay you are pulling it but your body is not broken okay but it, instead of that it is getting stretched okay instead of that it is getting stretched but it is not broken in the sense what is the meaning it means that there is some internal resistance okay resisting force that is acting inside the material for the applied load okay here you are applying the load p okay say here there is a interatomic bonding force is there so that is what resisting the um, resisting the deformation or uh, the separation of, of these two atoms okay and that resisting force is uh, the resisting force is nothing but the internal force the internal force is nothing but understand very clearly the internal force is nothing but the resisting force offered by okay once okay. again so that is nothing but the resisting force offered by the atoms microscopically if you see okay offered by macroscopically if you see offered by the solid what is solid solid is made up of atoms okay so when uh, you have a resistance in the atomic level then your solid is also showing that resistance um uh, 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 as a collective uh, measure of force okay because if you take a cross section of this rod okay say it is a square cross section okay in this cross section you you will have millions of atoms okay so every atom is playing the role in this resistance okay every atom is playing the role in this resistance and collectively this is a this becomes a resistance of this body okay this is a body and this is atom level this is uh, the solid body level okay macroscopic approach okay and this is microscopic approach 
okay macroscopically it will be termed as a resistance of the solid and in microscopically it will be it will be termed as a resistance of the the atomic bond okay so that is what the internal force internal force is the resistance force offered for deformation or separation of any solid for the given applied load okay so this is the internal force so i have all, i hope all of you understood what is a, a difference between the external force and the internal force okay so now the deformation and stress okay stress you will will be more studying about this term called stress deformation you can easily understand what is deformation so when you have this body uh, see imagine here you have uh, uh, you have this uh, this uh, square rod and you are applying the load p in both side okay then what happens the length of this body will will increase because it, it is it will get elongated because it is getting pulled okay so this uh, elongation say the change in length imagine this is the this is the after length okay this is the after length of the the same body say it is initial length some l okay and now it is uh, stretched length okay some l plus uh, l plus some x okay so now what happened it has been stretched to a distance of x to a distance of x so that x is nothing but deformation that x is nothing but deformation so how much the body is deformed that can be measured by using the change in the dimension in the loading direction predominantly even in the other direction you will be change you will be having changes uh, in the dimension but uh, we'll be focusing more on the direction in which the load is applied and what is the change in the dimension of the body in that direction so here we have applied the load in the axial direction so we will be we will be uh, more focused on the change in dimension in the axial direction okay so that is what elongation the elongation is nothing but the deformation okay so deformation it may be elongation or it may be uh, compression or like a shortening of length uh, that depends on the nature of load if instead of pulling it if i if i apply if i apply a pushing force like uh, okay here if i apply the force in this nature okay what will happen instead of a stretch elongation what will happen the the length of the body will get reduced okay so that is compression so that is also a deformation okay deformation is nothing but change in dimension of the body okay change in dimension of the body when you hear me yes yes sir yes. No? yes sir yes okay fine yes so uh, deformation of the body uh, change in dimension of the body when you apply when under some some force p okay when under some force p so this is the case and now uh, we will see what is stress okay uh, stress uh, i told you what is internal force internal force is a resisting force offered by the uh, by the body or solid or even say you can say the atoms okay uh, now what is stress means stress is nothing but the internal force acting in a cross sectional area or like you can say we are generalizing the internal force with respect to the area okay so that is what shown here you can see here this body is under force p okay here there is a cross section a okay imagine this is the cross section a okay you will be having lot of internal forces because these are all atoms imagine you have a lot i have i'm just uh, uh, giving a schematic representation yes, but you will be having but you will be having millions of atoms over there okay so i am just drawing this area over here okay this area over here when you apply the external force p i told you there will be when this is the applied force p okay there will be a resisting force offered by these atoms in the opposing direction but it will be equal to the 
uh, magnitude of the applied force okay so this is nothing but the external force this is nothing but the internal force this internal force i told you uh, will be uh, uh, will be offered by every atoms okay so there will be uh, uh, there will be resistance at all the locations of your atoms okay okay so then if you take one cross section there will be number of internal forces acting on that cross section because of the number of atoms present in that cross section they will be offering the resistance okay so we have to take only one magnitude because we cannot take millions of magnitude of internal forces for the calculations we can only take one particular uh, value so that we can easily calculate the or generalize the behavior of the material so what we do to solve this problem what we do to solve this problem in the sense what we do we just see the area in a macroscopic way not in the microscopic way okay micro in the sense atomic level macro in the sense solid body level volume level so macro is what we are seeing micro is not what we see okay so we need some high resolution microscope if we want to see the atoms and the others okay so here um, here what we do uh, we are we are taking the average of all these forces which are acting in this cross section area it, it may be slightly varying in the magnitude you cannot say all the atoms will be exerting same internal resistance uh, so the atoms present in that cross section area may offer a different magnitudes of uh, uh, a uh, resisting force but so uh, in order to um, uh, make the calculation easier what we do is we just take an average of all these forces okay so this p that is representing that is getting represented is more equal to p by a okay so this p that is represented over here is nothing but average internal force average internal Force. Okay, and this A is nothing but the cross section area, cross section area that you can easily measure as I calculate. How? Because it is a square cross section. So if this side is A and this side is A, A into A, you will be having the cross section area. So this is the average internal force divided by area. If you put this, uh, if you generalize this internal forces with respect to the area then you will be having a new term called stress okay so stress is a term okay that is that is framed to generalize generalize the internal forces okay with respect to area okay so if you are asked to uh, tell the meaning of stress then you should say that that is the parameter that is defined by using the uh, internal forces with respect to the area not just forces by area it is internal forces internal resisting forces offered by the material to the area so that is how you have to define the meaning of the stress internal resisting forces okay offered by the material offered by solid per unit area okay so the unit what is the unit so this is nothing but newton because the forces are defined in newton and the area is defined in meter square so newton per meter square this is the unit of stress so stress so the unit is newton per meter square or you can say pascal okay fine so this you have already known okay so unit of stress is newton per meter square that is pascal fine so this is one thing that you have to uh, you have to also uh, uh, pay an attention okay so the same kind of uh, a yeah, yeah, solid body is under some force compressive force imagine i told you there will be some internal resistance in every stretch ku resistance irukum adhe mari inga compression ku resistance irukum so you will be having atoms okay and for this compression they, they will be exerting a opposing force okay in the compress aagradhukku these this uh, bonding force will be offering a resisting force okay so that is how you have to understand and now they have taken uh, the different uh, cross section cut sections uh, a cut section over here a cut section over here 
a cut section area over here okay they have defined the profile of the stress to oh, stress profile okay but you can see here they are different they are different they are not equal uh, the profile you, you can see the profile over here you can see the profile over here and you can see the profile over here even in the profile they are not same uh, at center it is having a maximum value and uh, closer to that it is having some good value and then it is keep on decreasing when it is going to the end of the solid okay this is how actually the stress will be the stress will be distributed uh, non-linearly uh, throughout the surface uh, in that surface but for the sake of our convenience i told you we are neutral we are generalizing that uh, normalizing that by using the area and we are taking the average of these uh, value okay get it at the profile if you look at this profile stress over, over value over here is different here it is different here it is different here it is different but we are only considering one stress value that is average stress value okay this is also for the mathematical convenience we are doing that but in actual case what will be there in microscopic way there will be also difference in the stresses that is offered in the particular cross section that's what i told you in every internal forces ellame or or atom or or value kudukumo adhe mari stress value there will be different okay so that is what i i emphasize here when the internal forces are varying of course the stress will vary because stress is a function of internal force okay fine so to avoid all these problem what you what we do is we are just taking the uh, force that is acting on the centroid of the cross section okay this is the average internal force that is acting okay with that average internal force we are calculating average stress so the stress value that what we are calculating is the average stress it is not actual stress okay actual stress will be varying with respect to point to point okay but we are only having the average stress okay so now i hope all of you understood what is uh, stress okay what is what is mean by stress i i, I believe uh, everybody will uh, would have understood if you have any doubt in the term stress you could ask me now okay is it clear guys yes or no yes sir you have any doubt yes okay fine so now uh, in addition we have to also look into one more uh, uh, concept in, in today's class okay with this we wind up the class and here you see uh, the load is not acting in the uh, uh, in the actual axis of the body so this is the axis of the body passing through the centroid of the body okay but if you look at the force that is acting it is not acting through the axis it is acting in this particular axis okay uh, so what happens this is actually actually acting these forces that we have discussed here are actually acting so we have taken average stress but here what is the case in the sense uh, here when you have a load that is acting on the body in an eccentric way in addition to the axial stress you will be also having bending stress okay bending effect you know uh, uh, we will be studying in detail about it you don't worry about it at this point of time at this point of time you just understand that if a load is acting at a particular distance from the axis okay so this is the okay so this is the axis of the body okay if the force is acting at a distance at certain distance d from the axis of the body then what will happen due to this eccentricity there will also be a moment or bending effect in the body bending moment in the body the bending moment will be equal to the load into uh, the offset distance okay so it will also try to bend the body not only the axial deformation in addition to the axial deformation it will also subjected to a bending effect we will study about it in detail okay so there are possibilities for the uh, bending effect also when your force is acting in the in, uh, in an ax eccentric location from your centroidal axis okay so as a summary uh, in today's class uh, we have seen uh, the difference between the rigid body and deformable body and the difference between external and internal forces deformation and stress average stress and actual stress and non uniform distribution of 
stress uh, non uniform nature of distribution of stresses okay so this is what the uh, the content of today's class okay so the unit of the stress is newton per meter square that is pascal okay so uh, so that's all about today's class so if you have any doubt you can ask now any doubt guys no sir yes okay